So we're considering this problem on Lone Kappa where a girl accelerates a tow truck pulling a car. And we want to look at the force that the tow truck puts on the car and the force that the car puts on the tow truck. The most important thing for us to recognize is that there is only one force. It's an attractive force between these two objects that affect each oppositely or a repulsive force if they're pushing together. So this is a dynamics problem. Let's start by drawing the picture where we have some tow truck and we have a little trailer and there's a force between the two. We can label the masses and we can say, look, I know some accelerations and I wanna know the forces. So this must be a dynamics problem. I, my first step is I know that there's only one formula that could work and that's the vector sum of the forces on a body is equal to mass times acceleration of the body. And so we're looking at this force right here is what we want to know. And we know the acceleration of both these bodies. So which body do we want to focus on? Let's do the easier one because there's a hand pushing on this one that I don't know about. So here, there's only one force acting on the body, either a force pulling it in this direction or a compressional force pushing it in that direction. Yes, it's true. There's also the force of gravity pulling down. And I can ask myself that question. Is it in equilibrium? Yes, in the vertical direction, it's in equilibrium. So the force of gravity must be compensated by an equal and opposite force in the opposite direction, not because they're Newton's pairs. The force of gravity and the normal force are totally different forces. But if it's in equilibrium in this direction, then these forces must add to zero. The interesting action happens in this direction. We can ask ourselves that question, acceleration is in this direction or, or this direction. But I'm going to call this the positive direction. And so the acceleration is 3 meters per second squared and at the end, negative 8 meters per second squared. And so the forces in the x direction must equal mass times acceleration in the x direction. And I can say for sure then, 0.2 kilograms is the mass of this body and the acceleration is 3 meters per second squared, that's going to be equal to 0 0.6 kilogram meters per second squared, and that is a Newton. So very simply, if I need to accelerate this guy at 3 meters per second squared, the force on it must be 0.6 Newtons. And so what that is saying is there's an attractive force between these guys of 0.6 Newtons, meaning the force on this guy must be minus 0.6 Newtons. Because there is only one force, it's an attractive force. These are Newton pairs, which is really deceiving because it's only one force. It's an attractive force of 0.6 Newtons. And then you can do for the same thing if the force is negative eight meters per second squared. So it gets moving along, and then there's a force in that direction to bring it to a stop. And that's negative eight meters per second squared. You multiply it by the two kilograms, and you get a force of negative 1.6 Newtons because 0.2 kilograms times negative 8 meters per second squared is 1.6. So that's the force at the end. This would be the initial force. And of course, you've been in that situation. If you're standing here holding that, you're moving along and you go to stop it. The force on this guy is negative 1.6 Newtons. The force on you in order to stop it must be 1.6 newtons in this direction. So that is a compressional force between the two. You might call it, you might call it a normal force. And of course, when the acceleration is zero, you're moving along at a constant speed. There's no friction. We're making that assumption. So the sum of the forces is zero. <clears throat> there's no acceleration here. There's no forces acting on here. The force between these two guys is zero. Now what may be confusing about this is, well, what the hell is going on with this guy? How is it that there's a force, let's say in the beginning, that there's a force of minus 0.6 Newtons pulling on this? It must be accelerating in this direction. But the whole thing is driven by the force of the hand pushing it forward. And so that's what we neglected. We just looked at this guy because this was the only force acting on it. Now, there's two ways. If we wanted to find the force of the hand, there's two ways we could do it. We can say, look, that hand 
is pulling this whole thing. That's 1.1 kilogram. We could look at this as a single mass. And I could say, look, 1.1 kilogram at 3 meters per second squared, that requires the force of a hand to be 3.3 newtons. Now, if we look at this scenario only, and we want to find the force of the hand, and we say, it's 3.3 newtons. Does that make sense? Because this is 0.6 newtons, remember? And that means this is being pulled backwards at 0.6 newtons. So if we look at the truck, the vector sum of the forces on the truck equal mass times acceleration of what? Of the truck. The mass of the truck. So now we can say 3.3 newtons is equal to 0.9 kg times 3 meters per second squared. And are we right? No, we're not, because this is the vector sum of the forces. So if we look at the truck, we got a force here pulling it forward, but there's that minus 0.6 newtons pulling it backwards. And now we can see, all right, 2.7 newtons is equal to 0.9 kg times 3 meters per second squared. And I like it because this is 2.7 newtons. So the two key things here is that there's only one force acting on this guy, and that is the force of this hitch. That can be either attractive or repulsive. The other key thing is there's either an attractive or repulsive force between these two guys, and it affects them equal and opposite because it's the same force acting oppositely on the two interacting bodies.